Thanks to Real Link for sponsoring a portion of today's video. QLED technology used to be reserved only for the most premium top tier TVs, but today you'll find 55 inch QLED TVs from respected brands for as little as $350. That means there are more QLED TV options than ever before to choose from. And it also means that not all QLED TVs will perform the same. So which QLED TVs are the best? Well, I've got experience with just about all of them, so I'm gonna take you through my favorites and see if we can't whittle down your shortlist a bit. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and if you're new to this channel, I'm glad you're here. I'll save the spiel about liking and subscribing for later. Right now, I wanna help you decide which QLED TV might be best for you. And as promised, I'm gonna go through a list of my favorites and tell you why they are my favorites. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have an easier time shopping. But before we get to that list, I think I should explain what a QLED TV is especially since QLED is not necessarily just synonymous with super premium anymore, which by the way, is a good thing. That means almost everyone can enjoy the benefits of a QLED TV now. So if you consider yourself a QLED expert already, or if you just wanna to get to the list of the best QLED TVs, feel free to skip ahead. We have time code links in the description. But for those of you who could use a little update on today's TV tech, Let's do that first. The Q in QLED or QLED is shorthand for quantum dots. Quantum dots are these tiny nanoparticles that glow when you shine light on them. And while how they work is fascinating for those of us who are into the science of things, what you really need to know is that quantum dots help enhance the brightness and color of a TV set. All LCD TVs have LED backlights now, and the quantum dots kind of give the LEDs a big boost for better color, brightness, and contrast. Now, not all QLED TVs have QLED in their name or on the box. For example, Hisense, which makes some great QLED TVs, calls the TVs they make with quantum dots ULED TVs. It's a marketing thing, one I don't particularly care for, but there you go. Hisense ULED TVs are indeed QLED TVs. LG also makes TVs that use quantum dots along with other technologies, but LG calls those nanocell. And then there's Sony. Sony also uses a blend of technologies to get similar results to those yielded by quantum dots, but Sony calls their technology tri-luminous. Thankfully though, Samsung and TCL both call their TVs QLED. Now I mention all of that because the Hisense ULED, LG nanocell, and Sony tri-luminous TVs are all on QLED levels, even though they aren't technically called QLED. There's also a second part to this that you'll wanna know about if you haven't been researching and shopping for TVs for a while. QLED TVs will have either LED backlights, as I mentioned before, or they may have newer mini LED backlights. Mini LED technology is very cool, but just because a TV does not use mini LED, doesn't mean it isn't capable of being as good a TV that does use mini LEDs. Frankly, all that stuff is a big part of why I wanted to make this video. I just wanna distill things down to the best LCD-based TVs you can buy, which colloquially are getting called QLED TVs these days. So for the sake of keeping things simple, all of the TVs on this list are QLED TVs, and they're all pretty great. I'll help point you toward the ones you are most likely to love, and then you can take your new TV adventure from there. Sound good? Good, okay, here we go. The first TV I wanna talk about is the TV that I think is gonna be the best choice for the most amount of people, and that is the Hisense U7K. The Hisense U7K strikes a great balance between picture quality, overall performance, and price. So good that I think it's the best overall value in TV on the market right now. The U7K has a mini LED backlight system broken down into an impressive number of dimming zones. And so you get really good black levels, impressive brightness, and really satisfying contrast, all from a very reasonably priced TV. The U7K is great for all kinds of uses, and it's loaded with almost everything you could want and then some, including all the latest HDR formats, Google TV smart TV system, and a pretty decent onboard sound system. The only thing I want you to be aware of is that while I think Hisense is now showing a good track record of hardware reliability, the software part can be buggy sometimes. 
The Google TV interface built into the TV will serve you well for at least a couple of years, but I've been recommending that folks consider a streaming box or stick longer term. I like the Apple TV boxes a great deal, but I also love how good the Chromecast with Google TV dongles have gotten, and those are cheap enough that you can buy new ones every few years to have the absolute best experience. Anyway, the Hisense U7K is just a terrific TV that really hits a sweet spot for a lot of folks. If, however, you want an even brighter TV, something that just has tremendous punch or can do battle with direct sunlight, the Hisense U8K, the step-up model, is also an outstanding choice. I don't think that most people need a TV that's this bright, but for those who do, the U8K is one of the brightest at its price tier and is awesome for all the same reasons that I just listed out for the U7K. Now, before I move on to the next brand, I'll mention that Hisense also makes a U6K, a step down from the U7K, and while that TV is impressive for the price, I think you get so much more for the money with the U7K that it's worth spending a bit more if you can. The next TV on my list is the TCL QM8. And guys, I just think this is a pretty terrific TV. It's on the same level as the Hisense U8K in many regards. It's a mini LED TV with high brightness, very vivid colors, and awesome contrast. I think its black levels are just awesome and it shows minimal signs of blooming. That's where you'll see sort of a halo of light around bright objects on a black background. The QM8 does a tremendous job of minimizing that. The Google TV OS runs great on this TV and it has a solid onboard sound system for the price as well. Now, for video enthusiasts on a budget, I still recommend this TV because it looks very satisfying out of the box. But I will mention that its fine color management system controls, the kind of fine adjustments that only a professional should touch, can be a bit frustrating to work with. But for most of you out there, that's not gonna be an issue at all. The TCL QM8 is just a fantastic TV for anyone who loves premium picture quality and needs to keep to a budget. I'm a big fan. Now, TCL also makes the Q7, which is the step down from the QM8. It doesn't have a mini LED backlight system, so it's perhaps not as exacting as the QM8 or the competing Hisense U7K that I just talked about earlier, but it still manages to look excellent. The colors on the Q7 are very rich and vibrant and highly saturated, and that's a look that a lot of folks love. It is technically not accurate, which is why I was a little cooler on this TV in my review than some folks might expect. But that commentary in my review was targeted at video enthusiasts who were hoping that the Q7 might be the video files budget darling of the year. And because it didn't measure accurately, it didn't quite get that accolade. But I stand by my opinion that the TCL Q7 is gonna be a hugely fun and satisfying TV for almost everyone. TCL also makes a Q6, which competes with the Hisense U6K. And for the same reasons, I think most folks should try to spend just a little more on the U7K. I'll say I'd love it if you could spend just a little bit more to get to the Q7 if you can. But also, this is the best QLED TVs list, and those lower models just didn't seem to fit. Guys, I'm excited to tell you about Real Link's Black Friday Cyber Monday sale with discounts of up to 40% off site-wide. And if you miss out on the Black Friday Cyber Monday sale, no worries, Real Link has special discounts on selected products extending well into the holiday shopping season. Whether you need security for your home or your small business, Real Link is a one-stop shop for all your video security needs. We've shown you some of Real Link's products before, including selection from its Argus lineup, and there are currently deals on these three security cameras in particular that we wanna highlight. First is the Argus PT Ultra, a battery-operated solar rechargeable pan tilt camera that can keep an eye on a huge field of view with its 4K 8 megapixel sensor, plus it can detect people, pets, and vehicles reducing false alarms. It can also deter unwanted visitors with its built-in spotlight and siren. Next is the Reolink E1 Outdoor Pro. Like the PT Ultra, this is a pan tilt camera with a 4K 8 megapixel sensor, and it packs a three times optical zoom for getting in tight on subjects with crystal clarity. Another standout feature of the E1 Outdoor Pro is its Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, which not only maintains solid connection, but also blazing fast speeds for high resolution video. And there's the CX410 camera with true color night vision. This is a great choice for both homes and small businesses that may want to deploy a more advanced connected security system. It features an extra large F1.0 aperture and a one and one inch sensor, 
both of which aid its ability to capture full color images even at night. It also detects unwelcome visitors and can deploy both a sonic alarm and a warning light that's been tuned to a warmer color temp, so it's more friendly to your neighbors, but still quite deterring to intruders. It gets its power over ethernet, so it's a one cable installation proposition. You'll find links to all these deals down in our description below. Thanks again to Reolink for sponsoring this portion of our video. Next, let's talk about the Samsung QN90C QLED TV. Folks, the QN90C is just a stellar TV and very much in the premium segment. While the TCL and Hisense models I mentioned are stellar values, the QN90C really does have the fine finishing touches that deliver that premium look and feel. Everything from the brightness to the color to the contrast, the motion resolution and the upscaling, it's all just a step or two above the Hisense and the TCL models. You pay a bit more, but you get a lot more overall. I just wholeheartedly and enthusiastically recommend the QN90C, but there is a caveat. I'm not a fan of the Tizen Smart TV operating system that Samsung uses. I don't care for how it looks and feels, and I feel like there's just too many ads. I generally wish I could just turn that part of the TV off. You might not feel the same. I mean, give it a whirl and see what you think. Heck, you might even like it, but if you don't, a streaming stick or streaming box is a great substitute. Oh, and I should mention some of the finer touches before we move on. The Samsung QN90C has a great remote control and it has audio features that work exclusively with Samsung soundbars, which if you didn't know, Samsung makes awesome soundbars these days. So don't sleep on those. You get rewarded for staying in the Samsung product ecosystem. Anyway, highly recommend checking out the QN90C if you got a little extra scratch and you want a slightly more premium experience. Next, let's talk about LG. And folks, I'm just gonna be very straightforward with you here. I have not tested any of LG's NanoCell TVs this year. Not because I don't want to exactly, but because there are a lot of TVs to test and I've stayed focused on LG's excellent OLED TVs instead. I would not discount LG's NanoCell TVs, have a good look at them, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I have experience with those TVs this year or like they were a big priority for me. I feel like if I'm buying an LG TV, I'm buying an OLED because LG's OLED TVs are tremendous. And really, I think that's the best thing that I can say about LG in this video. I know you're here looking into QLED TVs if you're watching this video, but check out LG OLEDs. Even the LG B series OLED, which is down around the same price uh, as the Samsung and Sony TVs on this list, outstanding for anyone other than those who watch during the day with sunlight pouring into the room. And if you're a big movie buff with a den or bedroom or media room you wanna put a TV in, definitely look at the LG B and C series OLEDs. Next, we come to Sony, and I have two TVs I wanna talk about here. There's the X95L, which I think is my favorite QLED TV this year, and then there's the X90L, which offers a ton of what makes Sony TVs so gorgeous at a more approachable price. The Sony X95L is probably the best reason to spend a big chunk of money on a non-OLED TV. I like the Samsung QN90C and even the QN95C quite a bit, and Samsung makes some killer 8K TVs that can punch right up to the Sony X95 as well and then beyond. But for me, the Sony X95L is just the best QLED TV choice thanks to its incredible processing, smooth motion, and upscaling. It makes cable and satellite TV look so much better than it actually is. It kind of works magic with low quality video sources. It's bright, punchy and ridiculously accurate right out of the box. I just, it's expensive, but man, like I said, if you're gonna drop a chunk of change on a TV, the X95L is one of the best reasons to do so. I will say that Samsung challenges Sony in the off-angle viewing department, and some may prefer Samsung's anti-glare approach, so it could be a tough call between the Samsung QN90C and the Sony X95L, but I know which one I'd buy. Now with all of those accolades for the X95L said and out of the way, for most folks, the X90L is the premium TV to look at. It's marginally more expensive than the Hisense U8K, right around the same price as the TCL QM8. 
depending on sales and the time of year. But it's got that Sony processing that I love. It just makes really pretty, clean images out of not so great video sources. If you're a big lover of movies and high quality TV shows and picture quality is your number one concern, the X90L is worth a very close look. If you know where to look, you'll see where the Sony shines. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Big shout out to my friend Doug Beavers and his new record Luna. That's the record over my uh, left shoulder here. Uh, incredible Latin jazz. You should definitely check it out. Just wanted to give him a shout out on the channel. Thank you for the awesome recording. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider blessing us with a like. Consider subscribing for more great content like this. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.